Blog Talk Radio. Good morning and welcome to Live Natural, Live Well. I'm your host, Heather Lounsbury. Thanks for joining me today with Chef Dell, uh, Forks Over Knives cookbook fame. I'm excited to have him on today. And before I bring him on, just a few logistics. If you want to call in with questions, the number is 347-884-9533. That's 347-884-9533. And don't be shy, definitely call in because he's going to have some great tips for us today. And also, if anything comes up in the show um, that you might have questions about or need help with health-wise, definitely contact my office to set up a consultation. I do offer phone consults for people who don't live in the Los Angeles area. Um, please make sure to mark my show a favorite. And you can follow me on Twitter at Doc Heather. I also have a Facebook page, and you can sign up for my newsletter on my website, Live Natural, Live Well. And let's go ahead and bring Dell on. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Heather? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on. My my pleasure. I'm glad we uh, figured out the, the time difference. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <For the show. laughs> Yes, how how cold is it in Ohio right now? I think it was 20 degrees when I left the house this morning, which is not the coldest it's been. And it's going to hit uh, 50 by next Monday, so we have a thing in Ohio. If you don't like the weather, wait a minute, and it will change. It's very, very true. <laughs> yeah, a heat wave, right? 50 yeah, degrees? 50 will be a heat wave. We'll all be shirtless with shorts on, and I believe that's actually <laughs> true on campus. <laughs> nice. Oh, um, so let's start with you telling my listeners a little about your background and how you got to where you are today. Sure. You know, I've been cooking since I was a kid, and I've also been on diets since I was a kid. I went on my first 800-calorie diet at the age of eight, and I've spent a lifetime yo-yo dieting, gaining and losing weight over and over and over again. Um, At one time, I became vegan in 1997. I was working at a vegetarian restaurant that I'd been at for about eight and a half years. I went vegan, opened my own vegan bakery, and um, proceeded to gain over 200 pounds on a vegan diet. Um, easy to do with the number of processed foods, including oil and sugar and white flour and things like that. So it wasn't until I had actually closed the bakery, started a personal chef service out of my home, and um, finally got sick and tired of being sick and tired and came to the Wellness Forum as a client, the company I work with now, um, began our program eating uh, a low-fat, whole foods, plant-based diet like we, you see in, in the movie Forks Over Knives and like you see in the cookbook, um, getting rid of the oil, getting rid of the processed foods, getting the white flour, the excess sugars, and all that, and uh, started losing the weight, and I've lost uh, almost 250 pounds um, on this wow. program. You know, I've got some work to do, um, but uh, it's happening. I've, I've stopped gaining and losing weight. I've been slowly and steadily losing the weight, and um I'm feeling much, much better. Oh, congratulations! That, def- that definitely takes a commitment. It's a, it's a, well, it's a lifetime too. I think you know the the, the, the trick and the difference for me now is that um, I've changed my diet permanently, and I'm, and you know, I'm still making those improvements needed to do it. But I'm, it's a permanent change in my behavior. It's not just the diet fat of the day. Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I consider it when people talk to me like, "Oh, I don't want to diet. I don't want to diet." And like to me, it's about lifestyle yeah. rather than feeling deprived. Yeah. Um, yeah. No more starvation. No more hunger. No more dieting. That's the exciting yeah. part. Yeah. Exactly. And I don't know. If, I know we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit more in a second. But um, do you have you heard of Carly Katz's book Glow? Because she she went vegan and lost 150 pounds. Oh wow! No, so I haven't. It'd be a great uh, great book for you. Uh, oh nice. To check out. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine here in Los Angeles. Oh yeah, I'd love to read it. Yeah, um and what what was the what was the motivator for you to become vegan in in the first place? Um I had been working at a I went to work at this restaurant um to, to get experience in, in management because I was in business school and hating it and thought I'd better go get some a serious job and learn some management skills and I did, but I fell in love with the 
the restaurant and the people and the food. And, and actually, you know, eating vegetarian food, I discovered was uh, I was eating a wider variety of foods than I'd eaten before. You know, before that it was chicken wings and hamburgers and meatloaf and chili and chicken wings and hamburgers and meatloaf and chili. And then all of a sudden there's like all these new things. Now, the vegetarian diets are as unhealthy as any, any um, omnivore diet because of the amount of dairy that's consumed and if you're eating processed foods. But... Um, I was still eating differently and sometimes healthier than I'd ever had, and it wasn't until I, I went all vegan and opened a bakery that I, I, I gained the weight. But the, the, the reasons then, I think, for me were just learning about um, a lot of the environmental issues and the, the issues with um, um, how animals are raised and treated in this country, and it was just it didn't seem the right thing to do to continue uh, with some other being suffering that way and then, then treating our environment the way that we do. Yes. Yeah. It, there's a million reasons um, to give up the animal products. That's for sure. Um, and I'm glad you're a, a great example of, of what it means to become healthy on a vegan diet because I do hear people say, oh, you know, I used to be vegan or I know vegan and they're not very healthy. And so you, know, you can't eat just plants and not, and not do it right. But since so many vegans do it only for animal rights reasons, they don't really care. Yeah. You know, they would, it's just like eating the vegan versions of, you know, yeah. the standard American diet. Yeah, and I think it, part of the, the education process for those people has got to be that um, eating a vegan diet isn't enough because your processed foods are, are just as unhealthy for you in the short term and long term and even for our environment. For example, um, processed foods that are traveling across country and, 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 and refrigerated trucks to get to us uh, don't make any sense. You know, there is, it can be environmentally unfriendly too. So you know, there's more education that has to happen there. And then, of course, you know, if we're all sick and, and, and unhealthy and going through the health care system, which is another unhealthy healthy part of our our society then what good are we doing yeah exactly and it hurts i think it hurts the cause um because i know for me when i was in college i knew there were several vegans i was just vegetarian then there were several vegans and they probably were the (laughs) some of my most unhealthy friends unfortunately but um, i'd love to know how they're doing now but yeah, I've seen many. That when I had my bakery, I had people that were coming in there who were just eating. I know one girl that was eating just spaghetti with tomato sauce every day. <laughs> and I was just scared for her because even at my unhealthiest, I didn't even like to eat like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what does a typical day for you food-wise look like? I start every day off with a smoothie. Um I have um, almond milk and a banana and some frozen berries, and then I throw in um, um, some flaxseed and brewer's yeast, and um, I have a a vegetable powder that I put in it. It's got spinach and wheatgrass and barley and tomato and carrot powder. It's stevia sweetened, so there's no added sugar to it. So that's my, my first breakfast, and I try to eat more frequently than I used to. So my second breakfast might be a big bowl of like a, a oatmeal sometimes or a multigrain cereal. Um, we, we make our own multigrain cereal here, so it's it's very low in added sugar and no added oils, which is nice. And then I, I'm, my goal throughout the day is, is, is to eat a big green salad sometime in the course of the day. Um, a big one too, because the nice thing about eating that way is you can eat as much of it as you want. Um, and and then I eat a variety of foods. I'm lucky, you know, I cook every day for a living. So whatever I'm eating for lunch or dinner, it just varies with the day. So today, my my sous chef made a really nice vegetable stir fry with rice in it, and um, it was oil free and, and and very very healthy. And had that, and we had a salad, and we have um, we make our own salad dressings to sell because we make them all oil free as well. So there's plenty of that. And then I'll eat at, at night. It depends. I get home late sometimes, so I'm always trying to make sure around 5 or 6 o'clock that I stop and eat something, uh, whether it's more pasta or stir-fry or, or whatever, but just to make sure that I, I have to eat consistently throughout the day. My goal is not to be hungry because when I'm hungry, then I make bad decisions. Um, so I, I try and eat, and when you're eating the right foods, you know, the the food pyramid that we talk about at the Wellness Forum has beans and grains and, and um um, starchy vegetables like potatoes and yams and corn as the foundation of that diet because they fill you up. They're high in fiber and low in calories. They fill you up, um, and and then they send signals to the brain that says you've eaten and you've eaten the right kinds of foods. And and when when the brain has that signal, then you're not off chasing after the first donut that walks by you. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so then I, you know, eat that, and then I might have a couple of bananas before I go to bed at night, just so I don't wake up at two o'clock in the morning hungry. And lots okay. of water, by the way. Lots oh, good. Of the water in between all of that. That's what I. That's the number one thing I, I tell my patients is get enough water. It's the base <laughs> of our food pyramid. Um, it's the 64 ounces at least if you're exercising, if you need to lose weight, if it's hot outside and all that stuff. The more physically active you are, the more you drink. So it's it's a, and good water. You know, people are too quick to put. Um, oh my God, what's it? Gatorade or some? I won't say names, but some of these waters that okay, aren't water. Okay, you can do that here. Huh. You can say Gatorade. Oh, can I say Gatorade? Right? Good. <laughs> I mean, it's just it drives me nuts when people are like, but, I, but you know, I drink Gatorade. It's got electrolytes. And I'm like, oh, please, get your electrolytes <laughs> and food and drink water. And coconut water. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. That's just expensive, expensive, wasteful water. Yeah. It's, uh, and I, I, mean, I saw that Gatorade has finally uh, decided to take flame retardant out of their list of ingredients. Right. Isn't, so. isn't that the scariest thing you've ever heard? Another reason to stay away from the processed foods, people, is there's flame retardant in some of it. <laughs> I know, it's terrifying. And then I don't know if you saw this, too, that there's the revelation that uh, is it beaver um, stool that's being used for artificial flavoring. I think it's beaver. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't beaver, hear that Beaver one. poop. Oh, yeah, gosh. It's being used in artificial flavoring. Oh, it sounds delicious. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of reasons to stay away from artificial foods. One, I mean, from from you know some of these artificial foods is is one we we don't know where they're coming from. Obviously, you know, if if you're just not if, if they in other words if they had to put on the label the ingredient label, um, whatever the name of that one is, and, and call it artificial or flame retardant. <laughs> yeah. You know, if they had to put flame retardant in the ingredient list, do you think people would buy it? <laughs> I don't know. Actually, they might still. I mean, people are still eating at McDonald's. <laughs> you know? Right, right. You're right. There's people are dying of cancer every day and still eating the same diet that's killing them. Yeah. Um, so, what? Are, you're you're um, mostly a chef. Are you doing anything else in? I teach um, uh, a lot. Okay. I, t- I teach a, a, our wellness program here at the Wellness Forum. So um, we, again, teach this diet and using this diet as a way of preventing and even reversing diseases, um, the degenerative diseases that we see commonly in, in, of course, our culture. So between the two, teaching is kind of my passion. I love food, and I've been cooking for a long time, but teaching is kind of my, my newer passion of, of spreading this word, and um, I like doing it. So I teach a lot of cooking classes. I teach our wellness classes. And then I do, of course, as a chef of catering, and I do a personal chef and meal delivery service and things like that. Okay, that uh, keeps you busy. I'm very busy, which is um, <laughs> all the more reason to, to get healthy and stay healthy, is I need the fuel that a, a carbohydrate-based diet provides me. Yeah, exactly. Um, and how did you, I know we've talked about it personally, but how, I'd love for people to hear how you got connected to the Forks Over Knives guys and before you answer that, I, I should probably tell my listeners who maybe haven't seen it yet, it's this incredible documentary that gives scientific data and, and personal stories about how eating a plant-based diet can help prevent and reverse um, many diseases. Um, so if you haven't seen it already, check it out. I know I've plugged it on this show a thousand times, but uh, it's definitely worth the hour and a half. So anyway, so how did you get connected to the Forks Over Knives guys? Um, my business pop po- po- Popper, my business partner, Dr. Pam Popper, was out at Veg Source in California, which I've never been to, but she was out there speaking. And Brian Wendell, the executive producer of the film Fork Silver Knives, um, was there to see and I guess talk to Dr. Campbell about um, uh, making the movie. And um, of course, as you know, Dr. Dr. T. Colin Campbell um, wrote the China study, and Brian Wendell read it and was very impressed by it, as I'm told. And so um, he met with Dr. Popper, talked to her, and then they came back to to Columbus um, to um, interview her and film her and things like that. And they they uh, interviewed me, and actually I got to feed them, and, and I think they liked the food. So that was kind of the beginning of it all. And then I had a, a, a scene in the movie, um, the last scene in the movie is a, a, a dinner scene, and I got to prepare that food. And then they asked me to do some recipes for the first book, so I have seven recipes there. And off we went. Right. And I know the the uh, the book has been doing really well. And I, I guess there's pro- I should probably talk to Brian about this, but I'm assuming they're going to just keep doing more and more cookbooks based on the movie. Um, 
you know, I, I hope they don't ask me tomorrow to do it because I would probably pass out because this is a big project. Um, 300 and there's over 300 recipes in this book. And the exciting thing about it is, you know, I think that that means there's something for everybody. But um, I think food is, is kind of the question that people ask after they've seen the movie and they get the science. And the, the movie does such an incredible job of, of explaining the science that people are, are not calling us up going, would you explain why I can't have dairy again? They're going, okay, what do I eat now? Um, yeah. that's, that's the next question. So food is kind of the, I think, the, the next answer. And, you know, more cookbooks are certainly a possibility, I imagine. Um, you definitely want to ask Mr. Bryan about that. But um, this one's doing well. It's, it's number seven on the New York Times list, and it's in its, um, in its, its category. And it's been there for some time, and uh, it's been on the New York Times list almost since day one. So it's doing very, very well, and people are, seem to be responding well to the message. Yeah, it's. Uh, I can't tell you people who didn't know I was, you know, I'm friends with Brian or have even seen the movie will say, "Oh my God, have you seen this movie?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've actually probably seen it about ten times because I've had to have little viewing parties for friends and family, um, and I always get something new out of it. But uh, what are your some of your recipes um, in the, in the book? I have I have several favorites. Um, of course, I like them all because. Um, um, they're 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 all special to me. But um, it's a couple of my favorites. There's a, a section in the in the early part of the book called Basics, um, and it has in it things some sauces and things like that. And I'm I'm a sauce guy. I think that one of the easiest ways to add flavor to foods is to make a good sauce. So there's everything from pesto. There's a couple of different kinds of pesto. Um, there's a Chinese brown sauce which I use for stir fries. That's the one I probably use the most because I make stir fry a lot at home. So having a big jar of this Chinese brown sauce on hand means that I can have dinner ready in in less than 15 minutes because I throw some rice into a pan and I uh, keep cooked rice on the hands and then some vegetables into a pan and off I go. Um, so I love that Chinese brown sauce. There's a um, um, a cauliflower or a bechamel sauce. It's a cream sauce. It's made from pureed cauliflower. And it's used to make my absolute favorite dish in the book, which is the spinach and sweet potato lasagna. Um, I'm not a fan of, like, red sauce lasagna. It's not my favorite thing. I make it a lot for my clients, but um, I'm not a fan of it myself. But I love the white lasagna, the white sauce. So this is one of my favorite recipes. Um, and then I love um, some of the, the, the stir-fried noodle dishes, like Singapore noodles and some of those. I, I love Asian food. I, I love world cuisine. And it's kind of what influences me to, to to find new flavors is by traveling the world through a from a food standpoint. So you know whether you're talking about Thai or Mexican or um, 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 Haitian or whatever, um, every every culture has its its influence on on, on food and flavoring. So um, I'm a pretty happy guy to travel the world that way. And then, by yeah, the way, my, Isa Moskowitz, you may or may not, uh, not know if you're in the world of vegans, has, she's a, a vegan cookbook author and has written several successful cookbooks, but she did the desserts for this cookbook, um, which are absolutely amazing. Her um, double chocolate cupcakes, she has a frosting that's made with pureed dates and cocoa that you would never know. There's not, like, butter and fat and sugar in it. It's a, it's a sugar-free, fat-free frosting that's absolutely delicious. She did a very good job on, on the desserts. Um, having to do whole grain oil-free would have scared me. <laughs> it's not that easy to do. No. Man, you're making me hungry. <laughs> I, it, it, the fun thing, I think, you know, with this many recipes, there's something for everybody. So whether you like tacos or fajitas, or um, I know we just posted for the Super Bowl, our Super Bowl recipes, which included a polenta pizza that had pesto and potatoes and caramelized onions on it, and it was a big hit, and that's one of my favorite ways to eat pizza. Um, so there's a little bit of something, and, and like I said, smoothies. Sometimes smoothie is my dinner as well as my breakfast, so some of the smoothies are like five-minute commitments. You know, you throw everything into a blender, and it's done if you have all that stuff on hand. Um, so whether you're like a, a five-minute cook or whether you've got 15 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour, um, the recipes are easy and straightforward, and I, I think that people are going to like that fact about them, that there's nothing really, really complicated and all day and all of that in there. Yeah, and what what's in the? I'm curious um, with the you said the pesto, mm -hmm. the pesto recipe. What it, what's uh, what's in it since it's oil free? Because to me, pesto equals a lot of olive oil. I know everyone assumes that it requires the oil, and I'm, I've been making it a long time with silken tofu, 
And I actually don't eat a lot of tofu myself. There's not a lot of tofu in the book, but you can actually use even, like, the, there's a cauliflower puree in the book, which becomes the basis for the bechamel sauce. But you can use pureed cauliflower in, in, in place of the silken tofu if you want. Um, and then it has garlic and it has um, a few pine nuts, which are optional, and, and your herb, whether it's basil or tarragon or cilantro or whatever. Um, and that's about it. And then the flavor is, is rich and creamy um, without all the fat. Uh, this, it sounds like the perfect cookbook for people who don't know how to cook because I, I hear that a lot. Like, oh, I'd like to eat healthier, but I'm horrible in the kitchen or I don't have time. And this makes it so there's no excuses. Yeah, and I think that's, I, I think you're right. I think that's, that's the, 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 the truth of it is that whether, again, you're a beginning cook or a professional chef, you know, I, I have a, a few friends who are professional chefs who are looking at recipes and seeing them from a different standpoint because they're used to cooking. Um, oil is a quick and easy way to, to add flavor to food. So it's, um, we love it in this country. We love the taste of fat. And, and so showing people that there are other ways to, to make flavor happen has been cool. So whether you're a beginning chef or a beginning cook or a, a long-term chef, that's, there's something in there that I think that will teach you something new. And, and again, teach you that you don't have to be in the kitchen all day to make food. You know, like I, I've started this thing at home because I, I, I work 80 hours a week, so on Sundays I'm having a cooking day, and I'm picking like three or four dishes that I'm going to cook, and then have those throughout the week. Now I always keep things like I said, my, my Chinese brown sauce I always have on hand. It takes five minutes to make. Um, my um, um, I have brown rice on hand or some kind of grain like quinoa. Uh, I, I probably have beans whether they're in a can or cooked in a pot on hand so that I can have any number of dishes ready to go. And then I have vegetables, whether fresh or frozen, ready to go so that I can I can throw together some kinds of foods from wraps to um, stir fries to quick pasta dishes or whatever. And I think that's the, the, the way to go for busy people. And people people who say they don't have enough time to cook have time to cook. Um, a yeah, little so bit how of much time do you spend uh, watching TV or online? Well, and I tell, <laughs> I tell people this all the time too. I said the money that you spend eating out goes a lot further. So you could you could actually work less <laughs> if if you were to cook your own food because you're going to be saving that much money doing so. The money yeah. that you spend eating out and and getting in the car and paying for gas and paying for parking and paying for a tip for the the uh, waiter and then paying for the course of a meal that, um, you know, with some of these meals at $15, I think you could cook three days' worth of meals for $15. I know that I have that. My food bill is cheap. Yeah, the other I, thing uh, is when you're eating the plant-based diet, and then I'll, sh- I'll shut up, sorry, uh, eating the plant-based diet, eating lower on the on the food chain is far less expensive. When you're eating less processed foods, processed foods are expensive, meat is expensive, animal foods are expensive, um, and and learning to eat differently is much less expensive than people mm-hmm. realize. Well, and I, I always add that medical expenses are way more than eating healthy yeah. and missing work. Missing yeah. work was also way more expensive. Yeah, I had this conversation with someone the other day. It was like, I just said, I just don't know that I can do this, do, make this change. I'm like, well, if you think about this, uh, you're already spending a lot of extra effort going to the doctor and, and taking time off from work and losing time from work and losing productivity and giving up your life to deal with your health issues. I said, wouldn't it be nice to have your life back? How much is that worth yeah. to you? Yeah, exactly. I, I gave a lecture um on Sunday to a group of about 20 professionals, and um, some of them were just recently out of school, so they weren't, you know, financially stable yet, but they, they, um, a few of them asked me, like, you know, how do you do it? I can't afford it, and, you know, those those typical questions, and I said, well, just to give you an idea, I haven't had the rest of the day of work in 15 years. Right. And they, they, they looked at me like I was an alien, like they just couldn't grasp, grasp that I yeah. guess yeah like well my medical expenses are basically zero I get my teeth cleaned twice a year my yearly physical and that's it yeah I have no out of pocket health expenses I'm, I'm just like you if it's teeth cleaning um, I haven't been to a doctor in it's, it's been at least fifteen years and even yeah. even as an uh, you know even as an unhealthy vegan um, I hadn't been to a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> So do you know how your blood work has changed since you've lost all this weight? Or no? I I have I did I I've monitored my my blood pressure myself. I've, I haven't had a, a physical in a long time, but my I've never had high blood pressure even. Um, wow. Even, even at five hundred pounds, I didn't have high blood pressure. But um, um, so 
I think one day um, I've a few more pounds I want to lose, and I think when I do that, I'm going to go get get the blood work done just for me. Yeah, and I would be curious to see. I know a, a friend of mine, and it's in the Vegan Health and Fitness magazine. People can read her story there. A friend of mine, her husband, um, decided to do a 30-day vegan challenge, and they did blood work before and blood work after in just 30 days. And uh, her husband, his triglycerides dropped about 200 points, and she lost 15 pounds in just in just a month. Mm-hmm. And they and they were still they weren't doing the super clean vegan diet. They were still doing like, you know, Boca burgers and that kind right. of thing. So they weren't even, you know, being um, strict in that sense. But it was, it's uh, it's incredible to see what just 30 days how that can change your body. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. can. I know, um, you know, back in November, I had been talking to Chef AJ, who, who's out in your neighborhood, and yeah, she AJ. she had, had recently started eating less of the higher fat plant foods, so staying away from nuts and seeds, and she's lost a significant amount of, of weight just doing that. And I've, I've kind of been following her lead of of getting walking away from the nuts and and some of those things to um, even further my weight loss, and I, I took off. 20 pounds in three months just doing that. So that was the, incredible. Yeah, it was it was a really nice nice thing to do. It wasn't that hard to do because, you know, I always eat a pretty clean diet, but you don't realize how much even of those kinds of things, foods you can eat and how they add up. Yeah, it definitely can. And she's, yeah, she looks like a different person she from does. a year ago. She looks amazing. Yeah, yeah definitely amazing. amazing. Um, so we only have a couple more minutes left if you want to give any last-minute words of wisdom or advice to my listeners before we say goodbye? I, I, I think that if if you're the person that's, that's hesitant to start cooking for yourself, one, buy the cookbook. I think it's it's a great resource. Two, pick a day, pick three or four hours, because that means you're only going to have to do dishes once. And stock yourself up so that you have a healthy choice in your house every day of the week. It makes it, and get rid of the junk. <laughs> Throw it out. Throw out the potato chips. Get rid of the oil. Get rid of the white flour. Get rid of the sugar. Stock the health house with healthy foods. We have a um, pantry section in the cookbook that will help you do so. And then start cooking for yourself. And I think that um, you'll be, one, excited about how good healthy food can taste and, and two, how easy it can be to do so. Yeah, it's uh, it's not as hard as, as people think, and you've definitely done a great job at, at teaching that. So well, thank thanks you. so much. <laughs> thank you very much, Heather. Yes, you have a great day, and uh, good luck. Thank you. You too. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. So thank you, Chef Dell, for coming on today. Uh, if you have any questions for me, feel free to um, email me at info at livenaturallivewell.com. And if you'd like some help in just getting healthier or if you're interested in moving towards a more plant-based diet, I can definitely help. So feel free to schedule an appointment, uh, 310-259-5165. And make sure you mark my show as a favorite and follow me on Twitter at Doc Heather. Uh, in two weeks, I'm going to be having on the plant-based diet- dietitian, Juliana Hever. She has been on Dr. Oz. She has her own TV show. She's a very accomplished um, dietitian and a uh, shining example of, of health. So I'm looking forward to having her on. And if you have, again, if you have any questions, feel free to be in touch and take care. <laughs>